technical profiler. So why life without buildings this week then? Life without buildings. Um, do you know what? For no other reason than uh, I haven't listened to it for about 13 years. Couldn't <laughs> find my copy and I thought, wouldn't it be nice? I bet they've got one round here so uh, they can pop it on for me. There I know go. it's somewhere in one of the sheds. <laughs> One of the sheds. One of the sheds, On yeah. your palatial grounds. They're all sheds. I haven't got a house. Just sheds. I really have a selection of sheds. Uh, Robin returns once again as our resident music profiler, and uh, we shall give him some musical clues uh, provided for us by our mystery listener who's waiting patiently on the line. Uh, Robin will then, from those musical clues, tell us everything we need to know about this particular listener. Are you ready for the challenge? Well, not really. Last time it was a middle-aged man, wasn't it? But it turned out to be a young woman. But that was because <laughs> she'd chosen the songs of a middle-aged man. It's not my fault. Uh, this week, uh, we're going to uh, make it easy for you by giving you all six clues. Are you ready? We'll rush through these. Yep. Here's the first. Uh, introduced, like many people, uh, to music by my older sibling and my dad. It was always folk music in the car, but when my brother got into Queen, I did too. I stole Grace Hits Volume 1 and 2 and played it until the cassette died and I had to buy the CDs as a replacement. Give you any clues? Do you know what? At this point, I can go with neither male nor female. I know more male Queen fans, but having seen the queue outside We Will Rock You, I know that, in fact, that is merely just uh, by chance. Okay. Yeah, right. so... Oh. And age-wise, I'm going to be really cagey on this one. You're not going to push me too too far too early. These are some of the mistakes I've made in the past. OK. Uh, clue two. The first band that I found and got into on my own was the Manic Street Preachers. Everything Must Go was the song that really got me, and James Dean Bradfield launching himself into the vocals blew me away. Right, I'll go with 34. Yeah. And I'll go... I'm initially going to start with very cagely with female. OK. Uh, female and 34, yeah. yeah. Location-wise... Yeah. I can give you nothing as yet. OK. I can't even give you country yet. <laughs> there is a possibility there's someone who listens to you illegally yeah, or, in or, some kind of former Russian state. <laughs> Possibly online, legally. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Uh, Manic Street Places, everything must go. Here's clue three. This is Oasis. And acquiesce. The first big gig I saw was Oasis at the Old Trafford Cricket Ground. See, this is very, because it's such a kind of, this is very much one of those indie album compilations from about, you know, I suppose, what's it, 94, 95? Yeah. So yeah. I don't know whether to knock two years off and go for 30, I'm much older than I, yeah, do you know what, I'll go with 32. Okay. Towards 33, All I right. imagine, as opposed to towards 31 there, but definitely ageing forwards rather than backwards. Do you backwards. think they're close to their birthday, is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, I definitely Instinctively, think Instinctively, you know there's a birthday coming. That's one of their right. idiosyncrasies. Okay. Um, yeah. And the uh, location, I presume they are going to have to have been of a northwest location. Let's not play games with this. OK. Uh, but I don't think they're Manchester. No. I would say they may well have come from... Do you know what? Let, let's start with Macclesfield. All right. I may well move closer to, and go to Stockport in the end, but that's what we'll go with. OK. Uh, clue four. Excellent. At university, I experienced my music tastes broadening as I met new people who liked music but weren't snobs about it. Uh, I think it was the combination of politics, emotion and tunes that got me into Bob Marley. Now, their job. See, it wouldn't surprise me if for a while they'd worked... Uh, actually had worked in some kind of former church being used as a recording studio in Manchester. <laughs> um, but I don't think they're involved in the arts now. No. Uh, I would... It's not travel. They're definitely, they definitely... They live a stationary uh, work lifestyle. Yeah. Um, an interior work lifestyle. Uh... I will go with an office, but yep. yet again, I see some, some, it's not a, an office of capitalism, it will be more left wing. Uh, I went with ethical banking last time, I'm still waiting for someone who has been involved in ethical investments, so I'm going to go again with something that is, is ethical uh, and political, possibly political as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Amazing, you got all that out of Bob Marley. Here's uh, clue yeah. number five. What did you do with... Throughout university, having a more eclectic social group allowed me to discover all the music that I'd never heard before. I went through an 80s hip-hop phase and discovered a love for 70s funk and soul. Man, it's this stretch, and why did you do it? Uh, Are we still female? Or we male? Yeah, <laughs> no, we're not actually male, sorry, male, male now. Okay, okay. Uh, and I've totally forgotten that. And uh, bike, 
Uh, yes. Independent is the newspaper. Yeah. Uh, the subject at school will be more down to the teacher than the content of the subject, but I am going to go with... Do you know what? I think actually it may well have been one of the sciences. Okay. I think it is a science. Right. Uh, I'm wrong about the job they do. I think that their job is certainly something through the science degree that they did. Oh, okay. All right. right. It might be a social science, but I think it may well more have been a hard science. Right, this is the final clue, and this is quite an important one. That's all I'll say. The song that's never off my MP3 player harks back to my indie past and would be one of the hardest to delete. This is a wonderfully upbeat sing-along fun song, perfect for singing and dancing along to. And Melon Sebastian and the boy with the Arab strap. Chaos, chaos, so the chaos theory. Um, this is difficult, this one, because, I mean, I think they're all difficult because I think your listeners aren't people who have what may be called manly taste or womanly t- yeah, taste. Yeah. But I'm going to stick with uh, male okay. because uh, I, I've liked all these songs and I think, yeah, hobbies, no. What, I think just ho- no? No, I think they, it's, hobbies is generally the life that this person leads. You know, they go, they go to the pub, they go and watch bands, they listen to music. All of that is enough. For, the hobby is something which really is a last remnant for our generation, Steve, and this person is younger than us. <laughs> you. No one enjoyed a hobby. They had a hobby because they thought eventually it would be required in a job interview. I've got some more questions for you. Do they have a favourite book or type of book? Uh, for, I, I'm going to go with uh, non-fiction reader. Uh, I would say... Uh, uh, biography, autobiography of contemporary figures, by which I do not mean, well, I would say 20th century figures, I do not mean the celebrity autobiography. OK. Uh, do you think they follow a football team? Let's go with Man City, actually. Uh, Manchester City. Yeah. OK. Uh, do they have a favourite TV box set? Uh, favourite TV box set? Uh, for the time being, Breaking Bad, they've been enjoying a lot. Oh, OK. Yep. Yeah, as have we all. Uh, and would they know Derek Akora if they bumped into him in the street? Oh, hang on a minute. I'm getting something here. Yes, they would. Uh, give us a favourite holiday destination and then we'll bring, uh, bring the Favourite holiday the destination. Uh, let's go. They had a wonderful time in Ireland when they were younger. In Ireland? Yeah, yeah, Republic of Ireland. They had a lovely time there. OK. All right, let's see how we've done. As we welcome to the programme, mm. Ewan McInnes. Hello, Hello. Ewan. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Uh, thank you very much for doing this and being our guest this week. Uh, now, Ewan, uh, one thing I will say is... Uh, uh, hang on, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. This is what I got this right. Have you got a birthday coming up? I have, yeah, in about a week or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah there, there we go. are, there we are. But that birthday, uh, that birthday will make you what age? That will make me 29. Wow, people are so young now, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> when I was young, we were much older. It's incredible. <laughs> When uh, when you were growing... 32, 29, it's not a huge difference, is it? It's it's a point, I think we'll give you that one. The uh, place uh, where you grew up and the place where you now live, Ewan? Uh, I grew up mostly in the southwest of England, so Bath, Bristol area, nowhere near Macclesfield, I'm sorry. No. But that's... I live now in Edinburgh, so, I mean, it's halfway between. Yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> You're being very kind to him, Ewan. Well, you know, it... I mean, the rest of it's a bit rubbish as well, though, so... <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, uh, for your job of work, then, do you do something based on your love of science? <laughs> your, your, uh, this is Robin's um, assumption that you have a love of science. Uh, what do you do? Uh, well, I don't have a science degree, and I don't have a job related to my science degree. Okay. Um, but the one bit that was right was the idea that I have no hobbies, because that's just the life I lead. Because I've just basically indulged all those passions into... I uh, I do ghost tours. Oh, I dress up, brilliant. Dress up as a ghost and entertain people in Edinburgh. Uh, and also, I've written a book. Uh, so sort of my love of writing allowed me to write a book about Edinburgh, but in the sort of fun, open style of the sort of tours. And what's, and it, what's it called, your book? It's called Edinburgh for Everyone. Edinburgh for Everyone. Because okay. I, I also, my sort of main job is I teach English as a foreign language. Oh, right. So I wanted a book that could be sort of read and understood by all the visitors, not just, you know, native speakers. And where, where are your ghost tours then? Is it around... It's in and around the old town of, um, of Edinburgh. So is that near, uh, what's the famous one, St Mary's Walk? 
to Mary, well, there's Mary King's Close. Mary King's the, Close, kind of, that's it, yeah. The famous sort of street that was blocked off for a while. Yeah. But we're it. just in and around the closest of the old town. Ah, uh, okay, all right. Uh, so, other things we need to know about you. Let's see how we did. Do you own a bicycle? No, oh. I've not had a bicycle since I was about, I don't know, 14. Uh, Robin says your newspaper of choice is The Independent. <laughs> No, I would probably say Guardian Online mostly. Uh, okay. But the Independent, if that's the only one on option when I've got to get a train somewhere. Um, now, your favourite book or type of books, uh, Robin says, biographies of contemporary figures? No, non fiction was pretty hot, but yeah, no, I don't think I've got that many biographies. Uh, do you follow a football team? I do follow Hart. Of course you would, yeah. Uh, OK, uh, Hart. Uh, no, I have got my own football team, in fairness, so I follow them a bit closely, but they're not quite as major. You know? well, I've got my own football team. Well, me and my friends from the Ghost Tours created a, a Witchery Tours football team. Oh, I see. For a second there, I thought you were the chairman of... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think I might have mentioned that earlier. I have my own football team that I bought. Uh, all right, do you have a favourite TV box set? Are you enjoying, for example, Breaking Bad? No, no, not at all. No. If no. I've got a favourite box set, it'd probably have to be The West Wing. OK, and finally, and I hope we've at least got this one right, would you know Derek Akora if you bumped <laughs> into him in the street? I, I don't know what he looks like. I've heard oh, his name that's... mentioned, but I don't think I'd know what he looked like facially. No, there's a man who's involved in doing ghost tours, and you wouldn't know Derek Akora if he was Well, on it's one. all the historical side of things. <laughs> and uh, you once had, uh, as a youngster, a very enjoyable holiday in Ireland. I have never been to Ireland. Oh. <laughs> and we need to give you a mark, or at least uh, we don't. I say the royal we. It's Ewan's job to give you a mark out of ten. Ewan, uh, what do you think? Well, what was I supposed to be, a 32-year-old from Macclesfield who works in science? Yeah. Male, <laughs> male... Uh, three, three points. Well, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> we'll take that. Um, all right, it's three out of ten for Robin this week. Uh, if you'd like to be profiled by Mr Ince, just drop us a line via the website or you can uh, email us here in the studio and we'll get you on uh, one of these weeks. Uh, in return uh, for you uh, coming on air and being a great sport, Ewan, we'll play you one of these tracks in full. Do you have a particular favourite? What do you want to go for? Uh, well, I mean, they're all obviously five tracks that I chose. Um, but, yeah, any, any of them would be great. Any of them? Yeah, Absolutely they're all good. My choice of music is incredible. OK, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got them all lined up on this little cart wall in front of me. I'm going to close my eyes and just push one. Hang on, it's this. 